Provincial Capitals of China, Part 5, Autonomous Regions. Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region, Tibet Autonomous Region, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Notice that the full name of each autonomous region indicates the name of the minority ethnic group associated with the region. Now, let's learn the capital city of each autonomous region. As we learned in a previous video, the name Guangxi is the combination of a word that means expanse or expansion and the word for west. In Chinese, the full official name is Guangxi Zhuangzu Zizhichu. On screen, you can also see the name of the region using the Zhuang language. The Zhuang people make up about a third of Guangxi's population. During much of China's history, Guangxi was a province and its capital was Guilin, a northern city famous for its remarkable river landscapes. In 1950, the provincial capital moved south to its present location in the heart of the Zhuang area. And in 1958, Guangxi became an autonomous region of China. The current capital of Guangxi is Nanning. Perhaps you can figure out the meaning of the name if you have watched previous videos. The first character, Nan, means south, and Ning means pacified. The Pacified South. Pacified? During the Yuan Dynasty, a variety of rebellions broke out in southern China. In 1324, two major rebel groups submitted to national authority and sent tribute to the Yuan Emperor in Beijing. To celebrate hopes for continued peace, the Emperor changed the city's name to Nanning, the Pacified South. Although the city has a history stretching back more than 1,500 years, it does not have the rich heritage of imperial importance or monumental buildings that we have seen with some other capital cities. Nanning's humid subtropical climate and corresponding scenery explain why it is also known as the Green City. Another nickname for the city is Five Elephant City, or just Elephant City. Although in modern times there are no elephants in Guangxi, there is evidence that long ago they were present in this area. The city has a park called Five Elephants Ridge, and in the middle of the city a large fountain in the form of five elephants. Like the two arches in the capital of Yunnan province, there are folk tales that speak of the elephants. According to one ancient legend, long ago five elephants arrived to help the area with flood control and to assist with the crops. Then a phoenix also arrived and was directed by the elephants to go to the other side of the river to watch over the city. A greedy administrator told people to build a tall pagoda at the spot where the phoenix was vigilantly surveying the area. The pagoda hampered the ability of the phoenix to fly. After a while, the elephants became concerned that they had not heard from the phoenix. Looking out across the river, the reflection of the pagoda appeared as a whip, and thus the industrious elephants fell under the control of the evil administrator. Two of the elephants escaped, but forlornly looking back became frozen in time, transforming into mountains. A second legend tells that during the Warring States period of Chinese history, the five elephants appear in a dream to Qin Shi Huang, king of one of the states. He attempts to urge the elephants forward by smacking their rumps with his hand. But suddenly his hand can no longer strike the elephants, instead just waving in the air he awakes to realize the elephants have turned into mountains. In any case, today Nanning is an industrious modern city 
and an important center of the Zhuang population in China. Now let's head north to Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. The English name, Inner Mongolia, is a straightforward translation of the name in both the Chinese and Mongolian languages. The full official name is Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. In Chinese, that is See the full name on the screen in English, Chinese characters, and Mongolian script. Inner Mongolia's huge irregular crescent shape extends more than 1,400 miles from northeastern China to the far west. It includes vast areas of grassland, deserts, mountains, and river valleys. Throughout history, this area has been a transitional borderland, separating the sedentary agrarian communities of the south from a changing caste of hunter-herder groups to the north. Eventually, Mongolian tribes became the dominant force in the north. Under the leadership of Genghis Khan, the Mongols united to conquer a huge area across Asia and parts of Eastern Europe. China was absorbed into the huge Mongol Empire. After the death of Genghis Khan, the empire split apart. In 1271, Genghis Khan's grandson, Kublai Khan, created the Yuan Dynasty, combining China with what is now the independent country of Mongolia. Later, the Chinese Ming Dynasty arose in the south, and Mongol armies were pushed back to the north, where the struggle continued in the border regions. The English name of the capital city of Inner Mongolia is Ho Hat, or in Chinese, Ho He Hao Te. Those are phonetic transliterations of the city's Mongol name, which means blue city. The color blue is very significant to the Mongol people, as it is associated with the sky and with purity. Settlement in the area of Ho Hat has a long history dating back to the 3rd century BCE. In the middle of the 16th century of the Common Era, the Mongol leader Altan Khan built the Dajiao Temple on the site of Ho Hat, and then established a city there. Some sources say that the original walls of the city were built with blue bricks. This may have been the origin of the city's current name. Today, about 3 million people live in metropolitan Ho Hat. Ethnic Mongols comprise a bit less than 9% of the population. The city is a regional center of culture and commerce. Its industries include China's largest dairy producer. Just across the border from the southernmost part of Inner Mongolia, we come to Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region. It is one of China's smallest provincial-level administrative areas. The name in Chinese is Ningxia Hui Zu Zizhichu. The Hui are an ethno-religious group in China where they number more than 10 million. They are Chinese-speaking followers of Islam. About 20% of China's Hui population live in Ningxia, where they comprise 38% of the population. The capital of Ningxia is Yinchuan. It sits on the west side of the Yellow River as it heads north toward the huge Ordos Loop. The city's name means Silver River. It is said that in the moonlight, the sparkling clear waters of the Yellow River shine like silver. Wedged between the Yellow River and the Hulan Mountains, this city's location has a long history. Just southeast of the city, scientists discovered a Paleolithic site showing human presence about 30,000 years ago. And in the Hulan Mountains, a sizable trove of ancient rock art has been found. The name of this region, Ningxia, means Pacified Xia, this refers to the destruction, in 1227, of the Western Xia dynasty by the Mongols under Genghis Khan. 
Afterwards, the capital city of that dynasty had to be built again from scratch. That rebuilt city is today's Inchuan. It took centuries for Inchuan to recover its full grandeur. In 1958, Ningxia was declared an autonomous region. Although Inchuan is the capital of the Hui Autonomous Region, that minority group makes up only about 26% of the city's population. Agriculture, animal husbandry, and handicrafts are traditional areas of commerce. But during recent decades, Inchuan's economy has expanded to include machinery manufacturing, chemical production, and technology companies. By Chinese standards, Inchuan is not a large city, but in some aspects, it is quite modern. Leaving Ningxia and Inchuan, let's go to the next autonomous region. A journey of 600 miles southwest of Inchuan gets us to the border of the Tibet Autonomous Region. In Chinese, this is Xizang Zizhichu. Much of Tibet is uninhabitable, rugged terrain. Because of this, it is China's most sparsely populated region. Unlike other autonomous regions, in Tibet, we find that the ethnic group for which it is named makes up a large majority of the population, about 86%. In Chinese, the name of the Tibetan ethnic minority is Zangren. Although in the West, we tend to view Tibet as an exclusively Buddhist area, a significant number of adherents to the traditional Bon religion remain. In addition, a small but active Muslim population has played important roles in commerce and trade. The English name for the capital of the Tibet Autonomous Region is Lhasa, and in Chinese, Lhasa. These are phonetic transliterations of the city's name in Tibetan, which means Home of the Gods, a modern nickname for Lhasa is Sunshine City. The city is positioned in the fertile valley of the Lhasa River, which feeds into the Yarlung Sampo. Lhasa first became a capital in the middle of the 7th century under the direction of the Tibetan king Songsen Gampo, who founded the Tibetan Empire. During his reign, he converted from the Bon religion to Buddhism. Lhasa was the on-again, off-again capital of Tibet through the next few centuries, as the Tibetan Empire grew, then disintegrated in the middle of the 9th century. Dalai Lama is the title given starting in the 15th century to a series of religious figures of the Yellow Hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism. In the 17th century, the fifth Dalai Lama added political powers to his religious role, and in 1642, Lhasa was restored as the administrative capital of the central portion of Tibet. The end to China's civil war in 1949, combined with termination of Tibet's feudal landlord serf economy and the advent of regional highways and railroads, have all worked to elevate the general standard of living in Tibet. Religious cultural domination of Tibetan cities created many impressive buildings, so visitors to Lhasa gravitate to the Jokong Temple, Putala Palace, and a pair of nearby Buddhist monasteries. To the north of Tibet, we reach China's far northwestern area, the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The name in Chinese is Xinjiang Uyghur Zhu And on the screen, you can also see the name in the Uyghur language. Xinjiang means New Frontier. Geographically, it is China's largest administrative territory. In the south-central part of this region lies the Taklamakan Desert. 
To get past this area of brutal shifting sands, the ancient Silk Road forked into two paths. One stayed to the north of the desert, the other passed to the south. Xinjiang has been an ever-evolving homeland for numerous groups who over the centuries battled for control of the territory. A few of those contending groups are accounted for in the current ethnic makeup of Xinjiang. 45% are Uyghurs, statistically edging out the 42% who are Han Chinese. The capital city of Xinjiang is Urumqi, which means beautiful pasture. Phonetic transliteration to Chinese is Ulumuqi. On the screen, you can see the name in its English, Chinese, and Uyghur renderings. But the name of this capital city didn't originate in any of those languages. It comes from the Mongol Dzungnar people, who dominated the northern part of Xinjiang during the 17th and 18th centuries. The ancient Silk Road passed to the south of Urumqi, which was nothing more than a small town until rather recently. But by the time of the Qing Dynasty, it began to grow significantly in importance. Because Urumqi lacks a lengthy imperial history, you will not encounter remarkable ancient buildings. Although you will find numerous mosques here, bear in mind that the concentrated areas of Uyghur culture are in the southern part of Xinjiang. Though bypassed by the ancient Silk Road, Urumqi has become a critical way station of China's Belt and Road program, which includes a network of railroad paths that are reintroducing an important overland channel of commerce that passes from China's far east through its far west, continuing through the middle of Asia and onward to Europe and Africa. Like most Chinese capitals, Urumqi is now a large, beautiful, modern city. This completes our introduction, and as far as the continuation of the Basic Chinese Capital series, stay tuned for the sixth and final part of that series.